presentation, we're going to talk about tips to optimize structural masonry. I, I'd like to start with um, the expectations I had uh, in putting this together. Um, this program really grew from a lot of requests that we get to talk about how to use masonry cost effectively. And I, I have this luxury of dealing strictly in masonry as an engineer. Most engineers don't get to deal in one material, so you have to know them all and you can't delve into the depths uh, of one uh, that, like I can. So I want you to take away from this kind of the inner relationship between masonry materials, architecture, engineering, and construction. I'm going to give you a few simple um, tips. Um, and talk about the decisions you make in the engineering uh, that can lead to more efficient and economical structures. We're going to talk just a little bit about some non-traditional structural materials and systems and innovations. And we're going to talk about code and specifications and standards and how to apply them appropriately. Um, I'm going to start with what is structural masonry to us. Um, this program is really geared towards structural masonry. Many of these tips are appropriate for all masonry, um, partitions for example, or veneers, but some of them perhaps not so much. Um, so I'd like to start with what I'm talking about when I say structural masonry. This is using masonry for the building structural support. There's no surprise there. Talking about bearing walls, shear walls, maybe a wall that does combination bearing and shear, um, possibly the structural cores and, uh, for shafts, stairs, etc. in uh, a frame building. Um, there's also hybrid masonry and steel construction uh, methods. All these tips will apply in some, uh, depending on the configuration, to those uh, materials. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of what, what my non-engineering friends at, uh, at IMI talk to is, is the PSI stuff. Um, you're going to get some of the engineering uh, side of this, but this is a blend of essentially PSI and common sense, if you will, uh, here today. To me, structural masonry is a very versatile structural system. Uh, it's very fast. It's very efficient and economical, and in a lot of cases, it's already on the project. So we're going to show you how to use it structurally. Um, there might be uh, the first tip for you. If you've got the masonry on the project, let's consider it uh, from a structural standpoint. Masons are a finished trait. We have very tight tolerances. That is incredibly uh, valuable as you're going through your uh, interfaces, uh, connections with other materials, with other uh, building components. We really have no lead time for production review and approval of shop drawings. And, and the next particular bullet point that, that the contractors love for me to say is that it adapts easily to field changes. That part they agree with. When I say you pick up the phone and the change can be done, they, they kind of cringe a little bit, uh, I have to admit. But truly, it, it can be just that simple. Um, if you need to move a door or window, something like that. Uh, certainly simpler than many other structural materials. We use local materials and local employment. Uh, that, that in this economy is exceptionally important, I think. Um, it's one material. It can be finished structure, fire resistant, blast resistance, um, acoustics, etc. We can do all the lead stuff and the green stuff, and, and frankly, um, it, it looks good. So with that lead in, uh, I want to make sure you get started right. And what I mean by that is starting with the correct documents. I've got a photo up there. Let me see. They showed me how to use this pointer, so let's hope. No, nope, not, not going there. Aha, there we go. Uh, the MSJC documents, that stands for Masonry Standards Joint Committee. It's the building code requirements for masonry structures. You might have heard of it called as ACI 530. Currently, uh, ACI or TMS is the lead sponsor, and so it's more correctly now called TMS 402. 
There's companion specification, which you might have heard in past called ACI 530.1. Um, more correctly now, since TMS is the lead sponsor, TMS 602. This document will be referenced in the IBC 2012, all right, and is. Within both of those documents are referenced a lot of ASTM standards. Uh, this is not um, anything probably new for you all, but I want to make sure we get started on the correct page there. 